In the first Z-Stage video, I showed you how to construct the Z-Stage. In this video, I'll give advice about troubleshooting common problems and the maintenance procedures required to correct and prevent them. The issues addressed in this video fall into two main categories. First are issues relating to sticky focus motion, where turning the focus gear results in unexpected or difficult movement. This can be due to the focus platform sticking on the focus post threads. Or a sticky focus gear, although that can sometimes be useful, as I'll discuss. The second main category are issues of focus platform leveling, and there are also two main subcategories here. Leveling issues that occur after construction, and a technique for getting the focus platform accurately level during construction. So first I'll address the issue of a sticky focus platform. This refers to occasions when you try to lower the focus platform using the focus controls, but the focus platform doesn't follow the pulleys as they go down, because it gets stuck on the focus post threads. This manifests as failure to focus despite turning the focus gears, and also it can make the focus platform unlevel so it results in uneven focus across the field, as I'll illustrate later when we discuss levelling issues. This problem occurs if the PTFE ferrules in the adjustable articulations cling too tightly to the focus bolt threads, and the focus springs are not strong enough to keep the focus plate applied to the tops of the focus post pulleys. Fortunately, there are three things you can do to remedy this problem, and I'll start with the simpler solution, manual manipulation. A sticky focus platform may be a one-off occurrence for scopes that have been stored with the focus platform fully raised for some time. This is the way commercially available foundation scopes are stored in their original packaging. In this case, simply lowering the focus platform and manually sliding the focus platform up and down on its focus post at each corner a few times may be all that is needed to fix the issue. If this manual manipulation doesn't work, proceed to the next solution, greasing the focus post mechanism. Greasing should be done anyway as part of routine maintenance at least once a year, regardless of whether you experience a sticky focus platform or not, as a preventative measure to keep focus action smooth. This is the procedure to grease the focus mechanism of the Puma microscope. For this, you'll need some form of a thick gel-like axle grease, an applicator, a thin plastic applicator will help, and we begin by taking the optical tube off the microscope. The next stage is to lower the focus platform as far as it will safely go, and by safely go I mean that the lower part of the coarse focus wheel just makes contact with the upper part of the intermediate focus wheel. So this gap here disappears only just. So we'll do that by winding the coarse gear down, always keeping an eye on that gap because we want to stop just when it touches the intermediate gear. If you go any further, you could damage the gears, bend them, and that will distort the focus action. So there we are, just touching there, don't go any further. So now that we've lowered it as far as we can go, we do the same procedure now for each of the three focus post springs. So what you do is you put your thumb on the nylock nut, your finger on the undersurface of the a focus platform and simply pull it up so you can press that spring, pull it up so you can reveal the thread beneath here. Now the screw cup washer is loose and so what you do is you want to just push it down if it doesn't fall down already like that to expose the thread. So here's the thread and here's the nut, the top nut of the focus pulley which is where we're going to apply the grease. So, get the grease on your applicator, like so, not too much. Now 
expose the thread that we're going to grease. Let the washer come down. These washers are loose, but that's how they're meant to be. And then apply the grease in that area. So like so, all the way around. So it's touching the top surface of the pulley nut and the thread of the bolt. It will also touch the bottom surface of this washer, but that's fine, that's what we want. So that's all nicely greased up. And now, important thing is when you release the spring, you want to make sure the loose washer is central in its little cavity there. And if it isn't, just hold it the right way up, instead of upside down, so like this, and then just move it a couple of times, do it like that, until it settles in its groove. This one is already settled, so I didn't need to do that. And so then you just repeat for each of the three focus springs. And when you've done it for each of the three springs, you can then release or raise the platform back to where it was. So we put some grease around each of these three. There we are. Like so, so that's that one done. Make sure it's central. And then we go to the next one. There we are. Again, some grease in there. Like so. Release it. Make sure it's central. So those are all nicely greased and central, and now we can lift the focus plate up again. We don't want to leave it at this low position, because if we put the optical tube in there, it might crash against the specimen, damage the objective and the specimen. So you always want to raise the platform back to where it was, or at least until the springs are um, almost fully compressed. So we're going up now. Notice the gap there is getting bigger. We keep on going until these springs are almost fully compressed. Don't want to go beyond that point. So there we are like that. And just one or two turns now down. One or two little turns down. And there we are. Grease has now gone on all over the threads. And this is now properly greased. If both manual manipulation and greasing don't solve the problem, then proceed to the next solution, drilling the PTFE bore holes. This is the most drastic solution, akin to a surgical procedure which, as for all surgery, should only be attempted if the previous less invasive options have failed. It must also be done with great care to avoid complications. The procedure may be required because, in some cases, the 3D printed hole in the adjustable articulations needs to be a tight fit to stop the PTFE ferrules sliding out during use. But this means that the printing tolerances are low and the fit could be too tight, such that when the ferrules are squeezed in, they become slightly distorted, with at least parts of their diameter becoming smaller than 6 mm, and this causes them to hold too tightly onto the focus post bolt thread. To perform this procedure, remove the adjustable articulations from the focus platform. To remove the adjustable articulations, we will first need to remove the focus plate. And to do this, we will first take the optical tube off. We will then remove the eccentric belt tensioners. So unscrew these. And bear in mind, we have the washers in place, so we'll take those washers out. Okay. Now, undo the nylock nuts. Now 
and keep the nuts and springs and washers to one side. And now the focus plate can lift up, but take care to try and lift it up evenly from all three posts, not to bend it too much in one direction, otherwise it will be difficult to lift. Make sure the washers, these cup washers, are down, otherwise they could be clinging to the bottom of the focus platform. And there we have it. So now that we have the focus platform, we can remove the adjustable articulations by loosening the grub screw by about two full turns at least. One, two, do the same here. And on the front. Now these may be a little bit stiff because the plastic may have bent from the screws pushing in. But if you can take them out with your fingers, that's fine. If not, then rotate them with a tool, such as an open pair of scissors or a lens removal wrench. Now these back, uh, these back two can be removed upwards like this from the top. So, but the front one has to go from underneath because we have this overhang of the quick release mechanism which will prevent it from coming up. So this has to be screwed down. Again, if it's a bit too stiff because of the indentation of the grub screw plastic, you use a implement but has to screw down. And you only need to turn it a little bit, then you can usually unscrew it by hand. Okay. So now we have the three adjustable articulations and we can continue to the reboring process. So for the reboring procedure you'll need a hand drill with a variable speed trigger like this. A high speed steel metal drill bit which is six millimeters diameter and you need one that is just a drill bit like this. What you don't want is one of these special filing drill bits. You don't want to use that because it will widen the gap too much. So normal drill bit. And then you want to take the adjustable articulation and feed it onto the drill from this top surface going towards the chuck. You don't want to do it from this surface because you might dislodge the PTFE tube and it will come out. So manually feed that in, screw that in to the, onto the drill, taking care not to um, wobble it about the axis. And then once it's on the drill like that, so like so, you then hold it, hold this steady, don't touch the drill bit, hold this bit steady and just drill it few seconds like this. That's all it takes. 
and then just do the same for the others. Screw it on. Take it off. Screw it on. Take it off. And that's it. So now these are all properly bored. You don't need to take off too much of the PTFE. You just want to make sure that they are six millimeters. And then reassemble your stage using the procedure that was described in the first Z stage video. Now, having tried the previous three solutions, the problem should be sorted. However, if you're still having issues, then remove the focus plate. I've already taken off the lock nuts and the springs. Remove the focus plate as we did before. And then test each individual hole against its respective focus bolt to see if it's a tight fit or not. So the front one, we'll do it like this. Keep this level all the, all the time. And if, when you keep it level, it's not showing undue resistance, you know that it's got nothing to do with the size of the borehole. Do the same thing for the others in turn, like so. As long as I keep the flat platform level, level, I'm not feeling any undue resistance. Likewise, this one. Now, if you did feel undue resistance, it would mean you'd need to widen these bores some more. Okay? Now that you've tested each one individually, you put the you test them all as a group. So it has to be kept level. I can't emphasize that enough. So I'm going to start off with the tips of the bolts just at the surface of the PTFE ferrules. I'm going to apply pressure equally as best I can on all three sides and see if it gives undue resistance. And that doesn't. Okay. So if that if that's the case, you don't feel undue pressure. It means that the springs you're using are probably too weak. You need to seek out stronger springs or maybe slightly longer springs so that uh, when they are compressed, they have a bit more force in them. And if you did feel undue resistance in that last test, then that suggests that it may be that these focus posts are not going directly upwards. They're at an angle somehow. So that's what's causing the undue resistance. And that can happen if there's any issue with the base plate. If, say, you screwed this in too tightly and it cracked the surface of the base plate here, the undersurface, that could bend the focus post in or out. And that is another reason why you may get undue resistance and a sticky focus plate. We now move on to the separate issue of sticky focus gears. This means that a lot of force is required to adjust focus, even with a fine focus gear. The coarse gear is usually a bit hard to move anyway, which is why Puma uses a three-gear system. It may also manifest as excessive elastic backlash. Sticky focus gears can sometimes happen if the fine focus gear is allowed to rise up its M6 axle bolt because the bolt shaft fans out near the bolt head, effectively increasing its diameter, and so it catches on the axle hole of the gear due to friction. A simple solution is therefore to just manually push the fine focus gear down. You can keep it down, and so prevent the problem, by inserting a collar of split PTFE tubing into the gap between the bolt head and the gear. The collar must be 2 to 2.5 mm high, so if you only have the standard 5 mm long PTFE ferrules used to build the adjustable articulations, you can simply cut one of those in half. Note, however, that this cause of sticky focus gear can be a useful thing. You can deliberately lift the fine focus gear up after focusing to effectively lock it in place and so reduce elastic backlash. Another cause of difficulty in moving the focus gear is if the GT2 timing belt is too tight. The eccentric belt tensioners should all be at their minimum setting on a new Z stage. If that is still too tight, then you can try removing them completely. 
If you only want or need to remove one of the belt tensioners, then that should be the back one, so you keep a symmetrical system of tensioners. If removing the back tensioner is not sufficient, then remove them all. If the previous solutions still do not solve the issue of a sticky focus gear, then the central axis holes in the focus pulleys and or gears may not have been sufficiently widened and cleared during construction, so may be clinging to the threads of the focus posts and gear axles. The solution is to dismantle the stage and attempt to further clear the bores using the thread of a focus post bolt as described in the first Z-stage construction video. Ensure they spin freely on the thread of the focus post prior to reassembling, as described in that video. The remainder of this video will discuss issues relating to levelling the focus platform. The focus platform must be accurately parallel to the base plate so that the microscope objective does not tilt at an angle to the stage and so to the specimen on the stage. If the objective is not parallel to the specimen, then you may notice this as variation in focus in a linear gradient across the field of view, with one half being in focus while the other is not. Do not confuse this with lack of plan correction, which is due to the optics and not alignment. A field which is not fully plan corrected shows variation in focus with radial distance from the centre of the field. Either the centre is in focus and the periphery is not, or vice versa. This type of uneven focus is nothing to do with focus platform levelling, so changing the focus platform angle will not correct it. It is important to understand that uneven focus can have many causes which have nothing to do with levelling the focus platform, so these other causes should be considered first before adjusting the focus platform angle. Firstly, check to see if there is anything under the slide, like some adherent particle of glass chipped off from the slide, or wax or plastic or some other debris. This might be adherent to the back of the slide, or it might be stuck to the surface of the stage. Also, check if the slide is not held level in the slide holder. This is particularly the case when using a movable mechanical slide holder rather than stage clips. Consider if the specimen itself might not be level on the slide. This can happen if you are looking at a thick sample which might have an irregular surface. Also consider whether the objective lens has been screwed in at an angle, crossing the thread in the RMS thread adapter. This is more likely if you use a 3D printed plastic RMS thread adapter. Or if the thread adapter component itself is screwed in at an angle to the objective holder. Finally, consider that the objective lens itself may be faulty in that its internal lenses may be damaged or jolted out of alignment, usually because the objective was dropped onto a hard surface at some point in its history. This is more likely if you are using an old or second-hand objective. Such a problem cannot be properly compensated for with any levelling adjustment. Once all the above have been considered and either corrected or excluded, only then should you consider changing the focus platform angle. The adjustable articulations allow for altering the angle the focus platform makes with the base plate. To effect this adjustment, simply unscrew the fixing grub screw by one or two turns only, Then, using scissors, stiff forceps or a lens removal wrench, screw or unscrew the adjustable articulation to raise or lower it by the required amount. Then, fix it in position by re-tightening the fixing grub screw. Most necessary adjustments can be achieved by adjusting the rear two adjustable articulations only. It is unlikely that the front adjustable articulation need be touched. Note that the front adjustable articulation cannot be raised much anyway, 
due to the overhanging quick-release socket, although it can be lowered. For anyone using a Puma microscope with the advanced filter block, there is an even quicker and more convenient method to effect front-to-back axis correction using the front AR stay thumb wheel mechanism. This mechanism was devised to prevent the bulky augmented reality projector from tilting the optical tube due to its weight and also to reduce vibrations. However, you don't need to have an augmented reality projector fitted to make use of it because the epi black body modules colloquially known as light sinks or black holes are also designed to fit to this same thumb screw attachment more will be said about this mechanism in separate tutorials on epi illumination and the augmented reality module Now, I'll give a video demonstration of what was described in text form as Note 4 in the first Z-Stage construction video. This shows how to attach the coarse gear focus post with accurate alignment of the thread to make the focus platform as level as possible at the time of construction. So we're at the stage of construction where the front and XY focus posts are in place and their GT2 pulleys are threaded down in contact with their focus post spacers. We are now attempting to insert the coarse gear focus post by holding the coarse gear pulley with the GT2 timing belt in situ over the riser in the base plate and threading the focus post up till it meets and catches the thread in the nut in the coarse gear GT2 pulley. The issue here is that for accurate leveling, the coarse focus post bolt must catch the thread of the coarse gear pulley nut in such a way that the base of the coarse focus gear is in contact with the riser of the base plate, because if it is not, then it won't be level with the other focus pulleys. However, Depending on the exact angle of rotation of the pulley nut, the thread may only be able to catch if the nut is elevated by a small amount. This elevation may happen by simply pushing the nut up in its holding socket and this shift may not be noticed until you manually push the pulley and the nut together thereby revealing any gap at the bottom. If such a gap is detected, you should unscrew the focus post bolt from the nut, then adjust the angle of rotation of the nut by taking it out from its socket in the pulley and rotate it clockwise by one face of the nut, i.e. 60 degrees, reinsert it into its hexagonal socket in the pulley and try to thread the bolt again. Repeat this procedure till there is no gap between the bottom of the coarse gear and the base plate riser with the bolt threaded into the GT2 pulley nut. You can then complete construction as shown in the rest of the first Z-Stage video. In this way, you can ensure that all three focus posts are threaded with the pulleys all level with each other, and so the focus platform will also be parallel to the base plate.
your Puma Z stage should now be working well, as intended, and you should have all the knowledge you need to keep it that way. In a future video, I'll show you how to attach additional functional items to the Z stage, such as a mechanical XY slide holder and a stepper motor drive and limit switch system. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and support the open source Puma project by hitting the big red subscribe button. If you have social media accounts, also please share this video on those accounts using the YouTube share button. Thanks for watching.